Hey, good morning, options traders, and welcome back, everyone. Well, an important concept for new traders to learn is how time and volatility affect your deltas. And actually, you should understand how these affect all of your Greeks, but it's particularly important for your delta. So let's start there. Now, I think everybody knows how a stock's price will affect their deltas, and I do have other videos in here talking about that. But it can be a little tricky when you're trying to figure out how time and volatility are going to change your options deltas. So let's take a look at how you can figure it out. So to do that, there are two keys. The first one is to understand that increasing time or volatility gives more time for the stock price to move, whether up or down. So time and volatility are two ways of expanding the potential range of stock prices. And graphically, you can think of them as they will both flatten and widen the bell curve. So I've talked about this in previous videos. You can think about a current stock price. We'll have this implied bell curve sitting over its head. And that's dictated by volatility. So that's just saying at a current stock price and volatility, there's only so high we can expect stock prices and so low. But if we increase the time to expiration, maybe instead of looking at a 30-day option, we're looking at a 90-day option. Or maybe we've got an option and volatility increases. What's that going to do for the shape of this curve? Well, it might change from the blue to the red. Notice that it's gotten flatter and wider. So increasing time or volatility means that, yes, we have more potential for stock prices to rise, but we also have more potential for stock prices to fall. Now, as a side note, time and volatility will not affect your curves to the same degree. In other words, if you double the time to expiration or if you double volatility, they won't have the same effect on your deltas. But they will in the sense that they both move deltas in the same direction or they decrease them in the same direction. That's really the key to understand. Now the second key is that delta is the probability for an option to expire in the money. At least that's the definition that most people hear. And it's close enough for most uses, but you should understand that it's really an approximate probability and an options delta will technically overstate the probability of it being in the money. But those are really just little side facts about it. But if you just understand as a rough gauge that the delta is the probability that your option expires in the money, that's going to help you to understand how those deltas are going to change with time and volatility. So a nice little mnemonic example that you can use and kind of work through this in your head to kind of practice with it is to think of it like a football game. So let's say that we're rooting for the Bucks to win in an upcoming Bucks and Saints game, and you're trying to figure out the probability of the Bucks winning. So at the start of the game, let's say it's obviously 0-0, and let's say you also had no prior knowledge or prior belief of thinking that either team was favored. So at this stage, you might say, well, I'm going to give the Bucks a 50% chance of winning. But now let's say, that at the end of the first quarter, we've now gathered some more information. We can change our assessment. And so at this time, the bucks are ahead by three. It's now 10-7. What do you do to your assessment? Are you still 50% certain they're going to win? Well, if you were 50% certain when it was 0-0, you should be more confident that they now have a three-point lead. So let's say that you increase your assessment from 50% to 55%. And that would be the same as saying that our deltas have increased from 50 to 55. Now, it doesn't really matter if you thought you should increase it from 50 to 51% or from 50 to 60%. You just need to understand that the percentages must increase. That's the key to see. But now let's look at a different scenario. Instead of it being 10-7 at the end of the first quarter, what if it's 24 to 7? Well, that should now give you even more confidence that the Bucks are going to win. And maybe you would have taken it from 50% to 70%. So the thing that you want to notice here is that as that lead gets bigger for any given amount of time on the clock, your chances of winning must improve. And that's going to increase your assessments. And in the world of options, that's increasing your deltas. So that's the same thing as saying that your option is going deeper and deeper in the money. And if that happens, those deltas are going to increase 
for exactly the same reason. So what else could happen? Well, let's say that at the end of the first quarter, it's 10-7, you gave them a 55% chance of winning. But now let's keep the score the same, 10-7. But instead of it being the end of the first quarter, let's say that there's only 30 seconds on the clock and the Bucks have possession of the ball. What do you do now? Well, now it's not going to be 55%. You might hike it up to 99%, maybe even to 100%. So the thing to see here is that even though 10-7 isn't a real big lead in football, it's relative. It's not real big if you're at the end of the first quarter, but it's huge if you're in the final seconds of the game. And because of that, the market says, yeah, I know that a three-point lead isn't all that big, but given the fact that we're in the final seconds and the Bucks are in possession, it might as well be over. So the connection to make is that if your option is in the money, even by a little bit, let's say even by a penny or five or 10 cents, but you're in the final seconds of that option's life, it's the same thing. Those deltas are going to get very close to one for this exact reason. So once you understand how your perceptions of probabilities can be affected by time, what about for volatility? Well, it's exactly the same thing. Why? Because changing volatility is almost the same thing as changing time. They are two different ways of increasing the potential range of stock prices. So let's go back to our Bucks and Saints game. But let's say that at the end of the first quarter, it's seven to 21. The Bucks are losing. So you've altered your probability of winning from 50 to 30%. But instead, let's say that we were in the same position, 7 to 21, but there was an increase in volatility. So all this means is that there is now, for some reason, a better chance for both teams to score. And that's important. It's beneficial for both teams. It's just more volatility. And in the world of options, it means the stock price might go higher and it might go lower. So in the world of football, maybe it was pouring rain and maybe it stopped. So now we're saying, all right, the Bucks have a better chance of scoring. And yes, so do the Saints, but all we're concerned about is that it's also better for the Bucks. So instead of dropping it from 50% to 30%, maybe I go from 50 to 45. You might say, yes, it's not as good as when it was 0-0, but because there's such an increase in volatility, it's not as bad as 30%. Well, now let's change it. Let's say the Bucks are ahead 21 to 7 at the end of the first quarter, and you had initially gone from 50 to 65%. But instead, we got an increase in volatility. So we're looking at the same score at the same time, but under different conditions. So now we're saying, yes, it's possible that the Bucks could score more, but so can the Saints. And that's bad for us. So remember, in the previous example, we saw that if we could shrink time down to nothing, down to 30 seconds or less, that was beneficial. They gave us more confidence that we were going to win if we're already in the lead. Well, it's going to work the same way here. We would love to see volatility shrink to nothing. But if volatility increases and we're in the lead, that's actually bad for us. And so we might, instead of going from 50 to 65, might only go from 50 to 55. We're not going to be quite as confident with a 21-7 lead if there's more time on the clock or if there's more volatility. And that's what's going to reduce your deltas. So to see what happens graphically, here's the profit and loss diagram, let's say for a $100 call. And you all now know that we get a bend right here at the strike. So this is our 100 call, but it's at expiration. And that's why we either have delta zero if it's out of the money or delta one if it's in the money. But prior to expiration, this is not what it looks like. It might look like this. And the difference between this red and blue line is the extrinsic value. But let's say some time goes by, maybe a week, that red line is going to drop. And the difference between the red and the green is your theta. Notice that at all stock prices, we're saying that the option is now worth less money because the green curve sits below the red. Maybe a week later, we drop from the green down here to the blue. Later, we drop down here. Later, we drop down here. And maybe on expiration day in the final couple of hours, we might be down here. And then right on the bell when it closes, that's when you're going to hit this blue curve. So that's why I've emphasized this in so many videos. So many people look at these curves 
and they say, oh, this is what I look like prior to expiration. No, it's not. This is just at one very small snapshot in time. So to see how these deltas change, let's assume that we've got you know, maybe six months till expiration, we're on this curve, and we're going to compare it to something that maybe has just a week. So notice that if the stock is out here, maybe at 85, and remember this is the $100 call, it's out of the money. And take a look at what the graph is showing you. Do you see the slope on this red line? Do you see how that green line is higher, kind of facing up at a larger angle than this one? That's showing that your deltas will be higher for an out of the money option because you have more time. And that's why it's got this higher slope down here. But on the other hand, let's say that we've got an in the money option. We've got the 100 strike, but the stock's up here at 110. Now, if you have a lot of time to expiration, these are your deltas. But if you don't have a lot of time, this is your delta right here. And notice that this slope on the green line is a little bit steeper than on the red. And that's just saying that, yes, you've got higher deltas with an in the money option if there's not as much time. So I hope that helps you to understand the time and volatility connection and how it affects your deltas. You can also go to a pricing model and run through some examples. Try an in the money option and an out of the money option. Check your deltas and then increase the time or decrease the time. Increase volatility, decrease volatility, and see if you can predict the deltas. And that will go a long way when you go to selecting your expirations and your strikes. And it all begins with understanding how time and volatility affect your deltas. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the arts and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a brand new technical analysis course, all at optionsa to z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.